Six groups are going to be, one group is getting fungos from this machine right here. You'll be standing right there. You'll get your fungo, you'll field it, you'll throw it into the net. That's one group. Another group is that fungo machine right there. You're going to be standing right there. You get the fungo, you field it, we put it into the same net. All right, so every throw that we have today, we're aiming for a target, it's that net right there. It's very unathletic, it's not going to move very well. We've got to hit him right in the middle, okay? Okay, that's our two groups. Our third group is this red machine right here. It's gonna shoot those smash balls out, which are a little bit softer. You've gotta have soft hands when you field it. We're just gonna work on our footwork, whether it's backhand, forehand, doesn't matter. We're gonna field the ball, set up the throw, but no throws. So that drill is no throws, okay? Our fourth group is gonna be in our uh, throwing room, and that's going to be hands routine. So we'll go through what the hands routine is. Guys that were with us last year know what it is. Everything we do in the hands routine, make sure you're taking it very serious. So we're gonna give you four or five things you gotta focus on. Don't just go back there and just start rolling the ball like it doesn't matter. Station five is wall ball over there. So I'll show you that in a second. And then the last group is out there. We're working ladder drills, we're working sprinting, agility, all that stuff. All the drills that we're doing today, all infield drills. We're working on a couple of things. The biggest thing that we're working on, what's the first thing when the ball is hit, what side of the ball we get to? We get to the right side of the ball. Good job, Jeter. We get to the right side of the ball. Why do we get to the right side of the ball? Yell it out. We're always throwing to our left, right? Every position's gotta to throw to the left. I know there's a few exceptions, you know, first baseman double play, and maybe second baseman double play, but Pretty much every time there's nobody on, we go to our left. So when the ball is hit, boom, we go to the right part of the ball, okay? So we're trying to get to the right. We'll talk about ready position later on, but for today, all I wanna make sure is that we're ready to move every time. We'll get into the specifics next practice, right? So I don't want this when the ball is being hit, right? We're ready to go, our feet are moving, we're on our toes, make sense? Okay, ball's hit. We get to the right of the ball quickly. Now. Once we get to the right of the ball, the term I use is get the ball on your left ear. Because if I get to the right, see how the ball's on my left ear right now? I don't need to do this. If the ball's hit here, I don't need to do this. You can come back like that. Why don't I do that? Too much time, exactly. My angle's gotta be sharp. So all it's gotta be is one step. Get the ball on the left ear, and now I can start to work through the ball. Okay? What's my footwork into the ball when I feel it? Right, left, right. Beautiful. So right, left, feel the ball. 
I should time it up so that when my toe hits, I catch the ball. Everybody got it? Easy enough? So if I time it up so that when my left toes hit, I feel the ball, see how I start to move through the ball to my target? Okay? When I feel the ball, back flat, hands out front, where am I fielding the ball over my body? Left eye, that a baby for you that were here with us last year. Left eye. I'm left eye because I'm moving which way? Yeah, I don't want to feel right eye or right ear when I'm moving left, right? A lot of you guys are going to do that. If I go right side of my body and I'm going left, well, ball comes up, misses me. Or I've got to turn my hands like that. Does that look like a natural feeling position? No, my arm and hand are all tight. So I want my arm to feel loose. So I go right, left, and I go left eye. Back flat, hands out front. Everyone see that? If it's in the framework of my body, between my shoulders, do I feel it with two hands? Yes. yes, two hands, right here. My right hand is just off center, ball comes in, and I'm deflecting the ball. So I'm not doing this, and catching it, and digging in, and throwing it. Everyone got that? Yeah. Okay. Once I get the ball, what's my footwork to my target? Right to left. Left the target, beautiful, exactly. Now I throw in what? The ball with my throw. Very good. Everyone got that? When I feel the ball, where do I bring it? Right to the middle of my body, exactly. My elbows go out. Everyone got that? Pretty simple, right? So that covers everything. Now that's a real quick intro to fielding. Some of you have been with us before and know that. Some of you haven't. If you don't, we're going to teach it to you. We're going to work through it. We're going to work it in the drills tonight. Sound good? Good. Keep it to your left eye. the middle. Bring it out front a little bit more. Yep. Elbows out. Keep your chest forward when you bring it up. Don't lift up. There, Henry. Stay Keep your chest forward. Good. That's it. Hands out front. Reach out front. Chest forward. Time the ball pick. <laughs> Trying to break the record for most baseballs in a net. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, now we got now we got to get him out of the net. So Seriously, now everyone count the ball. No. <laughs> Let me just talk about a couple of the big things that I saw. We didn't really go over anything yet. Today's kind of a day to just see you guys feel. Some of you have never seen field before. There's a lot of stuff we can talk about. Here are the biggest, two biggest things that I saw. You guys can go on our YouTube channel and go to defensive playlist on there and anything I talk about here is gonna be there. So you can go when you're bored on YouTube, go watch some of the videos. The two things I saw. One thing is that our feet aren't moving through the ball. We don't have good rhythm. So we've talked about this for many years. When I catch the ball, what am I timing up the catch with? My left foot, my left foot, exactly. If you're a left hand, you're opposite. So it should be catch as my left toes hit the ground. If I tie my left foot out, see how I move through the ball? But if I don't tie my left foot out, I'm gonna put it down early. See how I stop? And if I am late with my left foot, now it's real ugly, right? So I'm just watching you guys. You should be able to do this. If you can't, bounce the ball off the wall and practice it. I will never take a ground ball and not time my left foot out. It, it happens because I've taken 100,000 ground balls in my life. So if you can't do that, if you're fielding the ball and going left-right field, you clearly have not taken enough ground balls, 
or someone's not told you that for some reason. So that's the first thing. The second thing is your glove has, your fingers have to be down, right? How many times did I tell you that today? When you missed the ball, where did the ball hit? Hit like right there. Yeah, right there. Happened like, I said, fingers down. The ball has to go in the glove. If you're like this, you're exposing that. You're not exposing where you want to get it off the index. Your hand, your fingers have to go down. You gotta roll me a ball. My fingers go down. How can the ball not go in the glove? It has to go in the glove. Everyone got it? So you've got to have your fingers down. You don't have to do this where you have like a tight forearm. Just let your fingers hang down a little bit. One more time. Sorry. Fingers hang down. Time up your left foot. There. Okay. Those are the two bigger things I saw. There's a lot more we can talk about. Every rep has got to be your best rep ever. Okay? It has to be. Every rep. If I'm 37 right now, if I went in to take a rep, this would be my rep. That's my rep. It cannot be like this. It can't do, you can't do this. Okay? Because how much better did I just get right there? Zero. I just got worse. Okay? Now some guys, I yelled at a couple guys, right? And this is what I'll say. I am going to, like with Odin, if I'm over here, I yell, Odin, get your fingers up. I'm not doing that because I'm trying to call him out. I'm not doing that because I don't like him. I'm doing that so that the next time, he doesn't do this and get the ball off here. And so when the game starts, he doesn't do this and get the ball off here. And we lose a game where he gets mad because he made two errors. I'm trying to help him. I don't have enough time to run over and whisper in his ear, okay? And if I'm coaching him, I'm coaching everybody. Everyone got it? So that's the first thing. The second thing is, your reps have to be, when I was playing, and this isn't just for me, I'm just telling you, because I played against a lot of players, all my reps, best reps I could possibly take. I can really say I didn't take many reps in my life that just went through the motions. Most of the really good players don't do that, okay? And I play with way better players than me, like way, way, way better players. So, you've got to have the best rep you possibly can. That's the bottom line. If you want to get really good, that's the only way to do it. You're competing now as you get older with better players. Some of you guys want to play high school varsity. Some of you guys want to play college baseball. The, what you're competing against is way better than you think. I'm just telling you. I've been to college baseball, I've been to pro baseball, I've been to major league baseball. Way better than anybody thinks. Most people are going to tell everybody you're the greatest player of all time. You guys are awesome. Talk to our 17U black team from last year. They realize how hard it is to play college baseball. It's very, very hard. Guys don't get it until they get there. They go, oh crap, this is way harder than I thought. By that time, it's too late. So, I'm telling you because I've already been there. Correct? I've been to every level of baseball. That's not bragging, that's just telling you. I've been to every level, from Little League to the Major Leagues. So I know how good you gotta be. So, I know I have not everyone here is playing the Major Leagues, right? But I know you guys want to play at a higher level than you're at now, correct? So I'm telling you what you got to do to go to that level. That's what I'm telling you. So I'm not doing a good job if Nick Rinaldi, for instance, not that I have any thing to come, if he's not doing a good job practicing, and I'm just like, hey, Nick, hey, you know, man, dude, great practice today, dude, great practice. If he went through the motion, does that make, why, that makes no sense. I didn't help him at all, right? So a couple guys I have to yell at. If you're not practicing the way you got to practice, I'm going to yell at you. Okay? Because I don't think it's acceptable. I don't think it's good. The best players are almost always the hardest workers. So if you're the best player, you better be the hardest worker. Right? That's what I'm saying. And if you're the worst player, then you really better be the hardest worker too, because you need to get working. But that's my message for the day. That's all I can. I always start off receiving talk. Alright? We practice what we do most as a catcher. What do you do most? You catch the ball. That's why you're called a catcher, right? You're not called a blocker, you're not called a thrower, you're not called a dropper, you're called a catcher. So, if you catch 100 balls in a game, how many times do you think you have to throw a runner out in a 100 pitch game? Maybe, sometimes never. If you have to throw out five guys, then man, there's a lot of guys running that day, right? So under five, how many times do you have to block a ball in the dirt with runners on or two strikes, do you think, in a 100-pitch game? 30? Who's pitching to you? Well, oh. they should no longer pitch. 30? That's 30% of balls you're blocking? 
hopefully you're blocking five balls, maybe a few more at your level, right? So what does that leave? That leaves like 85 to 90 balls that you're catching, right? So our job is number one, to catch the ball. Number two, to keep strike strikes. Everyone got it? If the pitch is a strike, it has to be called a strike. What that means is I can't take a pitch here and catch it and bring the ball here and get that strike called the ball. Everyone got it? And then the third step is, if you're really good, then you can get the borderline strike. So maybe balls that would be called balls, you get those to be called strikes, right? And we do that by, let's say the ball's at the bottom of the zone. We do that by low target and working up through the ball so that as we catch it, we're able to get an extra inch or two back into the strike zone. Versus the opposite, low ball, we work on top of the ball, we catch it going down, and now we put the glove down here and it's called a ball. Okay? If we're good at presenting the balls to the umpires, if we're good at keeping our bodies quiet and not shifting all over the place, how good are the umpires at our level usually? Not the greatest in the world, right? They're not in the major leagues, right? So we should be able to, if we do a good job, we should be able to steal strike calls that might not be strikes. Got it? So that's our job. So we start there. That's what we're going to practice today. We'll do a little bit of throwing, but we're going to practice most of the receiving. I don't personally care. We've got some guys that like to go one knee, left knee down. Some like to go right knee down. Some like to go no knees down. Do what you do for today. I haven't seen some of you catch before. I just want to watch you. I'll give you my thoughts on what you're doing. Do your own thing. I, I'm not. I'm gonna like. I've seen you catch a lot lately, right? So I might say more stuff to you. Um, and I haven't seen you catch in a little while. But just do what you feel comfortable with, and I'll give you my thoughts. Sound good? Okay. The last thing I'll say. Wherever the ball is, if the ball's bottom of the zone, what part of the ball are we trying to catch? Bottom. I'm trying to be below the ball. So I want to be below the ball, catch the bottom of the ball, boom. I want to be below it, bang, catch the bottom, bring it here. If it's inside to a, a left-handed hitter, it's here. What part of the ball am I trying to catch? This part of the ball, the outside part of the ball. I don't want to catch inside and push it off. I want to catch outside and bring it back. If it's in here, I'm trying to catch, I'm trying to get around and catch outside, bring it here. I don't want to catch inside, push it off. Okay? The high one's a little tough. You might be able to catch it a little bit deeper. You might be able to catch it and turn your glove down a little bit. So we're always trying to catch the side of the ball that is on the outside of the strike zone. So bottom, top, outside, outside. Everyone got it? There we go. Keep strikes, strikes. Good work under it. Yeah. My bad. Oh, yeah, yeah. Good. Wait, wait, wait. Good. Runner! Good. Hold on, not yet. Runner! Three more, G. Change up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, way to kill it. Run! Oh, yeah! Run! Good. Sprint! Ah. Hey, hey, blow the other way. You're never going to.
fall like this out here. Go! Sprint! Go get it! Yeah, go! Go get it, cool. Go! Oh, nice play. Get out of the way. Uh, one hand. Maddie just used one hand. No two hands on running catches. Go! Get there! Need to work on the speed a little bit. Yeah, I hammer that thing. Let me see it. split you guys up into four groups. We got one group up against the back wall with the with the uh, medicine balls here. There's a few different exercises you can do. First one, leg lift, slam the ball down and go. Okay, up against that back wall. You want to think about keeping the ball on your back hip. So when that back hip comes through, you really get the results of the ball moving. So again, it's going to look like this. On the back hip, ch chest pass into the back wall. Another one we can do, Right like this, just a little rock, rock forward, rock back, push. Again, off, right off that back hip. In the, the plyo room over there, you guys will take these water bags and you'll have a partner. So I'm gonna lift my leg, Mark could be my partner. And he's just gonna whack the bag. And when he says go, I'm gonna go, all right? Easy enough, it's gonna be tough. You wanna keep your core tight to keep this stabilized in front of you right here. You wanna keep this? on the throwing half of your body. Helps promote your hip-shoulder separation. See how my hips are opening up and my shoulders are back? That's what we're feeling. You're gonna start with your hips open, this on your back. And you're gonna think about rotating the top half, this your top half, and boom. And once you get here, your partner's gonna whack the bag again and make it hard for you. You guys are using these two poles here. Go on both sides of them, any angle. You're gonna work on your hinge. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna hold on, give yourself enough space. You wanna keep your hips under your torso. You see how my hips are under my shoulders? That's a strong position. You also wanna keep, think about keeping your knee in this direction and your shin bone. Everybody knows the shin bone, right? That should be straight up and down, okay? You don't wanna be like this. You don't want to be like this, way out over. I can't see my toe right now, right? You want to be able to see the toe. And there's a few different things we can do at this stage. You can do it free. As far down as you want to go, you want to see how far you can go. There's enough you're going to do it with comfortability. Nice and comfortable. And then the next one, you're going to feel it. And what you want to do, the reason you're holding on is because you want to let your weight go this way. The second I let go, I'm going right towards the plate, right? So you want to feel out where this leg should be, keep your balance. If I'm back here, let you can tell, I want to go this way. You got to keep this leg here. The second I let go, I'm going towards the plate. That's three stations there. And there's a set of cones outside. We're going to do single leg stability. So all you're going to do is work in between the cones. Here's the ones you can do again. You just hop out, stabilize. All right, there's one. And the other one you can do is up, up, stabilize, shuffle, switch feet. One more station, and you guys, I know you guys just did a lot of throwing. You don't have to do that much throwing. But there will be a few throwing exercises we can do with those next. Good, do it again. That's 
stick it. Yeah, stick it. Yeah, that's better. Stick it. Right foot only, ready, go. Right, left, right, left, right, left, over the line. Quicker. Up, stick it. Yeah, get up higher. Here we go, right foot only, ready? Land on the same foot you jumped off of. Yeah. Drive. Once you get five, you're going other foot. Go, sprint. Quick, 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 go. Catch it. Go. You skipped the last couple. Go. Still use your arms. Go. Don't just go feet. Get there. Yeah. Couple things that we saw. Um, I think the biggest thing that I saw as far as fielding goes was chest too upright like this. So you're moving around like this all the time. And when you're up here, you have late hands, so you flash your hands late. You put your hands down here, and now I can't see them, right? So I need to have, when I feel, what do we say our back is? Flat. Yeah, my back is flat. So one thing that'll help you when you're preparing the move, see how my chest is like this, but then when I'm getting ready to move, see how I go like this? And now when I run, see how my chest is forward? So guess what is easy for me to do? Have my back flat. Yeah, sorry, do you have a ball done? Hold on. Just roll me one. So I'm here. See how low I am? This is what I see from a lot of guys. See how under that looks? This ball, the ball should never ever beat your glove to the ground. If it does, it means that your chest isn't forward enough or you're late with your hands. Okay? So, the next thing is, watch my hands. Just watch my hands. What do my hands do? Ready? Okay. What did they do? Yeah, so they, they were like this, right? So I'm in this position, and then as I come in, all they do is turn and feel. A lot of you guys do this. Ready? Like that. So you grab your gloves in here, and then you flip at the last second. So coach was saying thumbs up. So just all you are, it's here, you run, you turn your glove, it's just a quarter turn from here to there. See that? The ball has to go in the glove. Everyone got it? So back has to be flat. Get our chest forward to help us with that. Open the glove early, and it's just a quarter turn right there. No holding on to your glove as you run after the ball. Okay? The last thing, like Coach Nick was saying, Follow your coach. You got another ball? When I feel this ball, and I'm going to throw it across this one. Everyone see that? It's not like this. It's not this. Right? It's not, you're not a pitcher. You're moving toward your target. You're moving through your target. Like that. Take stress off your arm by using your body. Everyone got it? Those are the big things I saw. But then, you have to work on it. So, I'm gonna just keep saying it, I'll just keep telling you over and over again if you don't do it right, and you gotta make the adjustment, okay? Because I don't wanna have to say the same thing. A couple guys, I feel like I'm still saying the same thing like a year later. So you've gotta make an adjustment. A lot of guys have made good adjustments. 
The new guys that have never heard this, this might sound foreign to you. I'm gonna just harp on it. What do you need to be a great infielder? Okay, let's talk about the mental game because this is such an important part of fielding. And a lot of people don't talk about this. If a hitter hits a ball 90 plus miles an hour, the ball's gonna travel about 90 feet in a half a second. I catch when my left foot lands. I get to the right, I brace, I go. So I'm gonna bring the ball here as my right foot starts to go to my left. When I take the ball out of my glove, my fingers should be on top of the ball. I don't take it out like this. I don't take it out like this. I'm on top of the ball right here. But it's not just about fielding the ball again. It's about fielding the ball properly every single time. If you're just gonna wait for your team to practice, you're not gonna be a very good fielder. If you're just gonna wait the field at practice when your coach actually does fielding practice, you're not gonna be a very good fielder. If you think you're gonna get great fielding three to five balls in infield outfield, you're crazy. You've gotta field a lot. And so you've gotta field before practice, you've gotta field after practice, you've gotta be able to do it on your own. Don't just wait for somebody to say, let's go practice infield. Go grab somebody and say, let's practice infield.